Oh, there's a fish following it. There he is. There's a fish next to the drain on the drop. What is that? There's a fish. Big. All right, people. Welcome back to the channel. It is the middle of October right now. Fall is here decisively. I have to say this is a pretty busy time of year for me. So it's been a little challenging to figure out the times when I want to go fishing, but we're making it happen. We're at this little pond today, pond that I've never really been to before. Just got a few hours. Going to be just doing some light gear fishing today. You know, throwing some small baits, maybe seeing if we can get like a little reaction bite going out here. Just got like three hours or so to fish, so, um, you know, in a way I kind of like to have more time, but like I said, it's just a busy time of year. Um, there's just a lot going on. Anyway, yeah, let's see if we can get uh, some uh, some fall fishing going on in this, this little pond. It could be just sort of like a pan fish day, or maybe we'll find a few little bass or something like that. Not really hope, expecting to run into any big fish in this little pond. It looks pretty shallow, pretty clear for the most part. Never know until you throw. So, let's go. All right, people, so we're down here at the pond. As I kind of step up, I'm seeing there's lots of gunk along the bank and I see little tiny fish kind of hiding in it. This pond is pretty small. It's kind of divided into two sections. There's like this upper end that is pretty small and pretty shallow. Looks pretty gunky, but it could potentially hold some fish. I'm looking at that shade line over there in particular, that looks like there could be some fish hiding around there. And then further down, there's kind of like this very shallow sort of channel right here. And then there's, I think that's like the dam side that should have the deepest water. There should be a way around those trees that's cleared off, I'm pretty sure. So we can kind of access that side. That really might be where the fish are going to be in that deeper water. But I'm going to start over on this side. I've got two setups with me today. So I've got the old classic ultralight setup. And then I also have this new one that I'm going to be trying out for the first time today. This is a light ca casting out setup. This is the Cast King Zephyr Bait Finesse Casting Reel. Um, so that's kind of, this is sort of like a BFS style setup, um, light casting. And you know, I'm, I'm just at that point where I, I know that I like the feel of a bait caster a little bit more than spinning so I'm trying to kind of get into the, the lighter bait casting set outfits so I'm just starting you know this is a brand new reel this is my first time making any cast with it Just kind of getting some feel for it right now. Oh, there's a fish following it. There he is. First, I didn't take long, did it? All right. Wow. <laughs> I was, I could not believe that. That was quick, people. Dude, nice pond bass just came up and smoked the crick hopper. <laughs> wow. That was sweet. I saw like a shadow behind it and you know I was doing the crank in the paws you know keeping it moving and you know this bait has that wide seductive crankbait wobble and this uh, little crook copper has been on fire lately um, but yeah let's take a look at this fish pretty little pond bass quite healthy kind of a stocky fish probably around 12 inches, you know, typical 
bass size really around my area that was pretty sweet i saw him come up and, and nail it in the shallows so really good sign out here that didn't take long at all so hopefully this is going to be a little pattern we can get on here just cranking a little bit in the shallows in this pond and catch some bass and, and maybe something else too beautiful fish here we appreciate you beautiful fish beautiful little pond bass here fearless fish there he goes cool very cool indeed first catch on this new setup with the new reel i've got seven pound test monofilament line on it right now didn't spool up a whole lot of line and i've got the brakes maxed out so i'm not really getting a lot of distance so let me one thing I like about this reel, it has a very detailed brake dial. So I'm just going to move that down a couple clicks, loosen our brakes just a little. We're already getting a better cast there. Keep casting near, there's a little log over here that it seems to be holding some fish. And try to get to the back end here and cast into that shade. So this is going to kind of sit somewhere between my ultralight and my medium spinning outfit. I'm kind of expecting to throw lures up to maybe a quarter ounce on it. I think this little quick hopper is like 3, 30 seconds of an ounce, so it's quite light. Probably on the lighter end of what I'm going to try to use this for. You know, this is not going to necessarily fully replace the ultralight, but I think it's going to be a good setup for small rivers and stuff like that which is you know y'all know i like that type of fishing weight you know wading and stuff like that that's kind of what i'm envisioning this for and you know bigger creeks and and also little ponds like this where you know downsizing your lure can make a make a significant difference this lake is quite shallow people i have to say it's only about a foot and a half of water out here maybe two maybe two feet make a few more casts with the quick hopper while I kind of try to figure out what I really want to change to. All right, people, so on our ultralight pole, we went with a little float rig here. Something slower. Um, we've got this little black and yellow grub as our bait here with a 164th ounce jig head. And then just a bobber and yeah, we're just gonna kind of cast this out. You know, let it sit for a while, reel it in a little, let it sit. See if um, maybe some of these more hesitant fish will eat it. There we go. First cast. I think it's a bluegill. Yeah, there we go. That's what we've been trying to get out of here, a little bluegill. Just had to downsize. They kept they were tail tuggers, man. That's all there was to it. And usually the best way to solve tail tugging is to go even smaller if you can afford it. And that's the great thing about the ultralight. You can cast those small baits quite a good distance on it. Pretty little bluegill. Thank you, Mr. Bluegill, about a four and a half inch fish. Appreciate you, bud. A few more casts of this, see what else will hit it. Maybe it'll be something bigger, like a bass even could, could go for this thing. There we go. Ambushed it. Looks like another bluegill. 
There we go. Slightly better than the last one. I just realized my camera was not pointing the best way, but. It's a slightly bigger one. Let's get a look at them real quick. Pretty nice colors on this one. Maybe a five inch fish. Nothing uh, too crazy. Send them on back. All right, fish, let's get you out of here. Appreciate you, bud. Here's a fish. Bluegill hit the uh, little jerk bait. All right, another bluegill. About the same as the others. Not impressed with the population of fish in here, I'll tell you that. All right, people, so we kind of had our fun there with the uh, bluegill. I'm a little bit further down the dam, and this water does look a little bit deeper on this other side, thankfully. Um, but we're gonna focus more with the, uh, you know, the BFS setup now and throwing some more aggressive lures for bass, primarily. Um, so I tied on the spinner here. This is one that I used in an earlier video with some success, you know, brass body, but a nickel finished blade with that eye spot. Kind of not sure what color to throw. So I'm doing this one, sort of dual tone one. And that's kind of what this lure is for, you know, those moments when you're just not really sure what color um, you want to throw. That's kind of why I built it. So, um, you know, this thing might get snagged, so I'm going to try to keep it off the bottom. There's lots of little sticks and stuff in here it could, it could uh, get stuck on. So probably won't let it sink much, probably won't let it swim too close to the bottom. But it should be a pretty comfortable lure to cast on this uh, BFS outfit, so... Just cover some water here. Okay, it looked like something was following it, but didn't commit. There's a fish. It's a bass. Yes. Yes. Nice. Stay hooked, buddy. Ooh, man. This fish feels good. He's kind of Oh, no, he's got me run the log. There we go. Come on over here. You're mine. Gotcha. Yes. Nice switch, people. Nice switch. Got another chunky little pond bass here. All right. On the spinner. We were kind of uh, varying our speed there a little bit when this guy hit it. So maybe that's going to be how these bass are going to react. This is a good sign though, people. I was like not feeling that great about this place, but catching another bass is a good sign. Let's get, take a look at them. Healthy fish. About the same as that last one. Kind of stocky, chunky, maybe, a, maybe 12 inches, 11 and a half. Felt really nice on the BFS, I have to say. That was a, it's a fun, fun setup so far. All right, let's get him back. Let's get him back. Thank you, fish. Healthy fish, healthy bass. There he goes. All right, wow, spinner, let's go. Might be the key, catching some bass out here. Mm, something bumped it. Something small. A couple more casts over here and then we're going to keep moving. Here's a fish next to the drain on the drop. What is that? Doesn't feel like a bass exactly, but it doesn't feel like a sunfish either. Oh, it's a crappie. 
Well, there you go. That's why I didn't feel like either, did it? Wasn't expecting to catch another species out of here. Crappy felt pretty good on the uh, BFS setup as well. one actually fought reasonably well. Sometimes I, th I think that crappy are kind of, you know, not the strongest fighters. But let's take a look at them anyway. That's a pretty, pretty little crappy there. All right, Mr. Crappy, you've done, you've done, you've served us well. Thank you very much. Beautiful, beautiful black crappy here at this pond. Thanks, buddy. All right, another species. Three species out of this little pond. Things are looking up, people. Things are looking up. Just had to figure out what they really wanted. So in order to get the distance for that cast, we actually did back off our brakes just a little bit. And it landed kind of right next to the left of the uh, that old rusty drain thing. And that fish hit it on the drop. Well, you can get some excellent distance. That was right in front of it. Here, there's another crappy down there. Yeah, I think the sweet spot for this setup is going to be like kind of this one eighth ounce size. There's a fish, big. Big fish. I think this guy was caught on something. No, I don't know what, it's a bass, he's on there. There we go. Man, that thing took off like a missile. Thought it was gonna be bigger than that. Wow, I mean that fish launched for that cover, I'm surprised it he didn't get off. That's the biggest one so far. For sure. Beautiful bass. Man, gave a crazy fight. I, I lost control completely right there. Wow. Let's take a look at this one. Here we go. That's probably... That fish is probably a pound. Maybe, maybe even a little more pounds and some change wow that thing just took off though that was i thought it had like a three four pound fish on there at first wow i mean that was that was surprising nice just one of the day great fight on the bfs at bait finesse casting setup fun turning into a pretty good day out here at this little pond might have to stick around best fight so far today wow they're loving the uh, that inline spinner. Seems like this is a perfect, perfect lure for the situation. And there's a all gone yellow jacket messing with him while I was trying to get him back in the water. A little miscreant. I think there's something on there. Something small. Oh. Starting to feel a little bigger. I think it's a bluegill. 
Yep. All right, another fish, another uh, bluegill. Even on the BFS, it didn't feel too bad. Oh, hold on, buddy. Let's get a look at you. There he is, guys. Typical for this lake. Thank you, bud. All right, people. So I've got to go ahead and hit the road here. It's been about three hours, I would say, out here today exploring this new pond. And, you know, I had to say it was um, not too bad, not too bad at all. You know, we kind of got out there, caught that bass almost immediately with the, um, with the, the uh, BFS setup, that new setup. And it was a lot of fun getting it on that little crankbait. And then things kind of slowed down for a while. You know, we were not really catching them. You know, eventually we started to get on some bluegill there with the ultralight. I think they were kind of used to being fished with you know with a bobber and a small hook because they were they were tail tuckers out here i'll tell you that just tail tugging bluegill out here and then made that switch to the spinner on the bfs and managed to land some decent little pond bass out here you can have some pretty good days out here in the fall it can be tricky sometimes too but um, you can have some good days and i think today i would count as a, as a pretty good day a lot of fun testing out that uh, new reel and that new that new rod putting them through their paces, hooking up to some decent bass. Good way to spend a few hours on a Saturday, if you ask me. So, yeah, nothing too crazy, but uh, yeah, good day, fun day. If you like what you just saw, please subscribe to the channel. If you're already subscribed, just know that I appreciate you. And yeah, we're gonna keep, keep, keep it go going here. I've been enjoying uh, the channel, making the videos. We've got a video dropping every week at Cross Country Bank Angler. So, I hope you enjoy this one. Take it easy, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Peace.